Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California invites you to Let George Do It. In a moment, we'll begin tonight's adventure. If you've tried several different motor oils in your car, remember this. We tried hundreds of oils in our laboratories and on the road before we developed heavy-duty RPM... The motor oil that, compared to premium-type motor oils, as designated by the American Petroleum Institute, doubles engine life between major overhauls due to lubrication. Now, performance reports from RPM users confirm it. One cab company, for example, found that heavy-duty RPM more than doubled engine life. Actually reduced engine wear 71%. Get heavy-duty RPM motor oil for your car at any standard station or independent Chevron gas station where they say... And mean, we take better care of your car. And now, tonight's story, Operation Europa, a transcribed adventure of George Valentine. George Valentine, Esquire. You were highly recommended by our American correspondents. As man who can handle very important and confidential matter involving quarter million dollar. Have air mail advance payment check and two plane tickets. Flight 286. Leaving International Airport, New York, Wednesday afternoon. See you and Miss Brooks. Brooks. In our Paris office, Rue de Ville, St. Thomas 5, Maurice LeBlanc, Europa Insurance Company. Hey, we're getting up in the world, Brooksy. Transatlantic cables, no less. Paris in spring. I don't want to sound stuffy, but we do have a business, obligations. And this cable doesn't ask, it takes this for granted. Paris in the spring. Spring. So I think we'll just crumble up this little Billy Do, throw it in the waste paper basket. George! And... Paris in the spring! And get started packing. Come on, Angel. Paris is not for working, it is for romance, joie de vivre. The organ grinders are out in the street, and children are playing. And, Mr. LeBlanc, we came thousands of miles in a matter of a quarter of a million dollars. Among other things. And you will not be disappointed, mademoiselle. But, yes, to business. Of course, the man who is about to cost Europa Insurance $250,000 is not here in Paris. He, He isn't? No. He's in Istanbul. Istanbul, Turkey. But that is only a few hours by airplane. Everything is only a few hours away these days. That is why we could afford to get you, Monsieur Valentine. Thanks. Our client's name is Henri Tour, a very respectable diamond dealer. I spoke to him a short while ago by telephone, and we made plans how you are to meet him. Oh, what do you mean, how to meet him? He wants to make sure that you are not seen talking to him because it might be important. That the thief does not know that. Thief? What thief? The man who stole the Romani diamonds. Peter Iglescu, the Romanian. Hey, hey, wait a minute, hold on. You mean you know who the thief is? Well, then what's the problem? Why can't he be arrested? He just cannot. Believe me. Monsieur Tour will explain. He wants to meet you on the Stambul Bridge at ten tonight. He will drive in his car and pick you up. Here's his picture. He will have a description of you. Sounds like a full-blown intrigue. Oh, it is that. Yes, indeed it is. How jolly. I have here a check for expenses and two airplane tickets on flight number... Uh, one ticket. I think I'll what? leave you here in Paris, Brooks, and what? get in touch with you at the hotel when I find out what this is all about. Well, but... Paris in the spring, remember? Enjoy it, Angel. And it will be my privilege to be your personal guide, mademoiselle. My blonde American, je suis à votre service. Oh, Oh, merci. Uh, yeah, I'll take that ticket and, uh, au revoir. Ah, 
10.15. I wonder if Turkish cops pick you up for loitering. Come on, Mr. Tua. Come on, come on. <laughs> Europe at one end, Asia at another. Quite a bridge. And according to the guidebook, those lights over there should be the old Sultan's Palace. Ah, good. Monsieur Valentine? Oh, hello. Mr. Tour? Yes. Come in. Quickly, please. Sorry to act so mysterious, Monsieur Valentine, but believe me, it is necessary. Whatever you say. Where are we going? There is a little coffee shop in Galata. We can talk there. Let me get this arrangement between you and this, uh, this uh, Peter Iglescu clear, Mr. Tour. It was not a very unusual arrangement, not here in Europe. Well, now, let's see. The Romany diamonds have been in the Iglescu family for a hundred years or more. You took them on a sort of consignment to sell them, and you protected Mr. Iglescu by giving him your personal note for $250,000. That's right. Of course, I am insured with Europa. That is where they come in. And uh, when did you find the diamonds gone? Almost a week ago, Iglescu and I are both staying at the Hotel Metropole. I was ready to show the stones to a visiting prince from India, and they were gone. I would swear that only Iglescu knew where I kept them. Did you accuse him? No. In fact, I told him nothing about the theft. Why? He would only deny it. And where would you look for four small stones? Oh, I see. In four days, according to our agreement, I will either have to return the stones to Igalescu because I was unable to sell them or pay him the money. Uh-huh. Well, what did you think I'd be able to do for you, Mr. Tour? I really do not know. I am just a desperate man. It... One thing I am sure about. What's that? Igelescu still has the diamonds. Here, somewhere in Istanbul. Oh, it's a big place. The Romani diamonds are too well known to the dealers. He could never sell the stones to them. And if he tries to, as you say, fence them, he would get practically nothing. So our friend will sit tight until he gets the money from you. Then later, get rid of the stones somewhere else. In Paris, England, America, maybe. Yes, yes. <laughs> Well, I sure enough can't just appeal to his better nature. He has none, believe me. He is charming and polished, but he is as hard as, as, as one of those diamonds he stole. He doesn't know of the theft, and he too lives at the Metropole. What is that? Uh, just thinking out loud, that's all. I may be brighter in the morning. That's right, LeBlanc. You heard me. But the hotel detective, Valentine. Hotel detective at the Metropole. And if your influence goes that far, let the manager act as though I've been a hotel detective there for quite some time. Very well. I shall not ask any more questions. I shall do what you ask. Fine, fine. It's just a hunch. But there's nothing to lose, is there? Yes, I can have some imitation Romani diamonds ready by tomorrow. Of course, they will not fool a real expert. They don't have to. Let them look pretty close to the real thing and I'll be satisfied, Mr. Tour. I see. But then you also say I shall have to play a part? Exactly. Like uh, like an actor? Like an actor. But don't worry, Mr. Tour. I'll coach you very thoroughly. darling. I can hardly hear you. I want you to come to Istanbul and register at the Hotel Metropole. You got that? Metropole, yes. All right. You can use your real name, but I'm afraid you'll have to do a little acting. Acting? Yeah. You're a flip, glib American show gal on the make. Why, Mr. Valentine? On the make, especially for a wealthy, fat little Frenchman named Henri Tour. Now, when you come to the lobby of the Metropole... The tall, dark gentleman over there is Peter Iglescu, Brooksy. Yes, George. Okay, let's start walking. And remember, I want him to see me in my job as hotel detective. I know, and see me making a play for Mr. Tour. Okay. But I tell you, I must find Fifi. She's not just my dog, she's my good luck charm. Oh, yes, yes, indeed, Miss Brooks. 
And all of us here at the Metropole shall do our best to help you. Fifi always liked men more than women. <laughs> the other girls in the show always say she takes after me. Yes, ma'am. Maybe this gentleman here saw Fifi. Oh, well, uh, well, let me ask him. Uh, I beg your pardon, sir. Oh, yes? Mr. Glescue, I'm the house detective. What? Uh, this is Miss Brooks, one of our guests. Hello. Oh, Miss Brooks? Yeah. Miss Brooks was wondering whether you'd seen her little black French poodle. The name is Fifi. It seems Fifi is lost. No, I'm afraid I have not seen her. And it is a shame I cannot be of service to such a charming young lady. Oh, say, that's sweet of you to say that. <laughs> well, uh, sorry to bother you, sir. No, quite all right. Oh, there's a distinguished looking man. Maybe he can help me. Oh, that's Mr. Tour, Miss Brooks. And if you'd like me to ask him... Oh, never him... mind. I'll ask him myself. I've always been partial to the older, uh, like I said, distinguished type man. Ah, very attractive girl. <laughs> Showgirl, Mr. Glescu. Oh? Didn't have much trouble getting to talk to Mr. Tour. No, no indeed. I uh, can't tell how they do it, but they can spot money in a man a mile away. Well, she might have lost Fifi, but she sure found Mr. Tour. Sorry to have bothered you, Mr. Glescu. Just part of my job. That's right, Mr. Tour. Sleep soundly. Pleasant dreams. Now, oh, where are those diamonds? Oh, yes. Here they are. Mm -hmm. Nice. Very nice. That will set the stage very nicely. Ah. Yep, that does it. Good night, Mr. Tour. Good night, Monsieur Valentine. And good luck. Oh, this is terrible, Igalescu. Terrible. I certainly think you have treated me very badly, too. What difference does it make now? Oh, when... Now, gentlemen, please, please. Yes. Yes, Monsieur Valentine, I am sorry. Look at my room. It has not been disturbed. I tell you, I was robbed by a professional jewel thief. The diamonds, the Romani diamonds are gone. Yes, sir, I shall report that to the police. No, no. I do not want that. Hmm? I want no publicity. It will only make the thief hide. You are the detective here at the hotel. You can help me. Well, you should have called on me last week. He did not even tell me what happened. And the diamonds are really mine. But I explained it. Those diamonds last week were imitations. Cheaper to carry around than to pay extra insurance premiums. That is why I did not worry. And you were protected by that naughty Glescue. So I did not have to tell you anything. I still think you might at least... Just what did you want me to do, Mr. Tour? I understand you've been here in Istanbul a long time. Well, uh, yes. And you, uh, well, you have had dealings with uh, all sorts of people. All sorts. I want those diamonds back. I will pay a reward. I will ask no questions. Well, that's always easier said than done. Ah, uh, if someone stole the imitations, you should have been warned by that, too. But I was sure no one knew that I still had the real diamonds. Ah. You must help me find them, Monsieur Valentine. I'll certainly try. How can you even start to go about something like this, Mr. Valentine? It is impossible. No. No, not impossible, Mr. Iglescu. It's mostly a matter of baiting the trap. Then you sit back and wait. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. Friends, if a sluggish, choked-up motor makes your driving a constant chore rather than a pleasure, now is the time to shift to the gas with all eight Chevron Supreme. Balance blended for peak performance under all driving conditions, Chevron Supreme gasoline gives you not one, not two, but all eight high-performance qualities. Fast warm-up, quick starting, vapor lock prevention, anti-knock, Economy mileage, area blending, smooth acceleration, and full power. Your engine needs all eight of these qualities to do its job right and make driving a pleasure for you. You'll notice the difference right away from your very first tank full of Chevron Supreme. Remember, any gasoline can be refined to stress one performance feature at the expense of others. 
But Chevron Supreme is designed and refined to give you all eight high-performance qualities in correct balance. go halfway across the world to Istanbul to try and recover a fortune in stolen diamonds. It's an unusual case because you're quite certain who the thief is, but how do you get him to give up the priceless loot? Well, if your name is George Valentine, you think the only chance is to set a trap with greed as the bait. So far, you've built only the first part of the trap, and even as sharp a gal as Brooksy can't quite figure out what the trap is supposed to be. I'll meet you back at Paris as soon as I can make it, Angel. Well, you'd better. Paris is no place for a single girl. Not even with a charming guide like Monsieur Leblanc? Especially not with a charming guide like Monsieur Leblanc. Oh. George, I still haven't the faintest notion of what you're trying to do here. I thought we weren't supposed to be seen together, and now you're right here in the open with me. Now it's important that I be seen talking with you. It'd be very helpful if I were seen. Okay. Maybe I'll find out what this is all about some other time. Oh, Brooks, you did a fine job. If its purpose is a little vague, remember I'm fumbling around in the dark myself. Yeah, I know, darling. The only thing I have been able to accomplish, I hope, is to put the first shadow of a doubt into Iglescu's mind. If the real diamonds were stolen last night, he's going to wonder what he stole last week. $30,000. That's right, Mr. Iglescu. And you're getting the bargain of the century. No, of course you know I can tell all of this to Mr. Tour. And the least that will happen to you then is that you will lose your job here. But you're not going to Tour, are you? You see, it's an economically sound proposition. If I sell you these diamonds, you can have them and the money you'll get from Mr. Tour on that note of his. No, but that, that girl, the American showgirl... You didn't have to pay anything to her. Oh, no, no. No, she was very grateful that I let her get on that plane to Paris without calling the police. Yeah, I told her I even did that because she was a fellow American. Oh, very decent of you. I'm afraid Miss Brooks is not a professional criminal. She just succumbed to temptation that once. It was quite a hunch I had that she was our mysterious Miss Raffle. Now, how do I know that you have the diamonds? You'll have to take my word for it. <laughs> not good enough. All right. Here. Ah, uh, no, I, I, I did not mean to doubt you. Uh-huh. Look, I'd probably get a reward from Tour, but it wouldn't be anywhere near 30000 So I gain, and it's a good deal for you. 30000 in American dollars. Is it a deal? I will get the money. I will meet you at six near the Moscari, that is the mosque with a large silver dome. So you really think you have him, as you say, on the hook, Monsieur Valentine? At least there's a chance, Mr. Tour. Have you checked all the banks here in Istanbul? There are only a few large ones. I have friends in most of them. And no Iglescu account in them, huh? No. And certainly no $30,000 transactions of any sort today. No. Good, good, fine. What? I do not understand. I think Mr. Iglescu needs one final bit of convincing that what I have here are the real Romany diamonds. And I have an idea he's going to try and convince himself. Gladly change places with you, brother. Way up there on that minaret. Safe. Uh, what this place needs is more electric lights. Of course, Iglescu could have chosen a meeting place in Galata or Pera. Or he could have... What the... Hey, hey, you! Oh, you're not going to run away leaving a knife there, are you? Take another throw at me, Fez boy. No, no. It's a handy word to know, but it's not going to help you. Hey, stop you. Oh, that's great. I sure don't want to chase him. Run back to the man who hired you, Fez boy. Metropole. 
Hotel Metropole. Me understand. No worry. Okay, I won't worry. Just get this cab there quick. You American, mister? <laughs> okay, kid. Yankee Doodle. Okay, kid, huh? Sure, fine. Me name P- Puko Vitsky. Yeah. Puko Italian. Vitz Rosh. Ski Polish. Which all makes me Greek boy. <laughs> okay, kid? Yeah, ginger preachy. Hey, what? Now what? Don't know. Maybe engine go fui. Me look. Okay, but make it snappy, will you? You help, Yankee boy. You. Hey, cut it out, you. Me knock your head. You'll need more than that. <laughs> okay, kid. More than a monkey wrench. Yankee doodle. Daddy. Oh. Oh, what do you know? Who would think Igleski would plan a double chance to knock me off? You failed to keep your appointment at the Moscari, Mr. Iglescu. A very bad feeling of mine, yes. But a couple of your friends sort of pinch hit for you, didn't they? And I do not know what you are talking about. Uh-huh. Anyway, you should know that you can't get anything without paying for it. <laughs> you cannot blame me for trying to save myself some money. Oh, it's done every day in the best of circles. <laughs> I just came by to tell you that you've missed your chance, Buster. The deal for the diamonds is off. Oh, good. Oh, now let us not be too hasty, Valentine. Oh, I'm not hasty at all. I'm just being prudent. I don't like the way you play. So I'm going to turn the diamonds over to Tor and settle for the reward. You cannot do that. You want to bet? I'll pay you the money. No tricks. Too late. 35000 Not interested. You're being a fool, man. A very bad failing of mine. All right. You can come with me while I get the money. There will be no more tricks. I value my life too much, friend. Besides, I already told Mr. Tor I'd be up to his suite in an hour. That I had a wonderful surprise for No, him. listen, Mr. But Ballard, you're I... welcome to be there for the finale. But where did you get these, Mr. Valentine? How did you get them back so quickly? Remember the agreement, Mr. Tour. No questions. Let's just say I was very lucky. I would look at those diamonds very carefully, Tour. I will certainly demand to know they are the real ones before I give you back that note for $250,000. Oh, well, they are the real ones. Oh, make sure by all means, Mr. Tour. After all, you yourself said there are some phony ones somewhere in Istanbul. The ones that were stolen a week ago. Yes, yes, I know. I am not an expert. I do not know the fine points of the stones. But I am not a fool. Well, I am almost sure. But, of course, I have an eyeglass in the other room. Why don't you get it? Yeah, let's get it by all means. These diamonds are safe here. And I wouldn't want any sort of reward for something I don't deserve. Anything you say, Monsieur Valentine. We will be right back, Igalescu. You cannot blame me, of course, for wanting to be sure. Of course not. Okay, that was fine, too. Or fine. Did you see him snap for the bait? Do you think it might possibly work? Now he gave it a funny, elaborate build-up. You should have heard him actually beg me to take his money for the diamonds. Here. I have the eyeglass. Uh, you better give him enough time. Not too long, not too short. Just the right amount of time. You say when we should go in. Yeah, okay. Do you hear anything in there? No. Okay, I think that's it. Yes, Monsieur Valentine. Easy, Mr. Tour. Easy. Yes, yes, easy. Did you get it, Tour? Yes. Here it is. Ah, the big moment is at hand, huh? For both of us, eh, Igalescu? That is right. Let me see now. Here, this first one. Uh, uh Uh-huh. Well? It is good, all right. Fine. Oh, you'd better make very certain, Tour. These others. Uh, uh, Yes? Yes, all of them are the real Romany diamonds. No question at all. Well, as I said before, I shall have to have other expert opinion with all due respect to your knowledge. You won't mind that, will you, too? No, no, I will not mind at all. And if I were you, I'd take that smug smirk off your face, Iglescu. What? It happens that he's right and you're wrong. What? Even though you think that the diamonds you switched on us make those on the table phony and the ones somewhere in your pockets are the good ones. I I, I do not know what you're talking about. Maybe I can show you. No, no, let go. Take your hands off me. What are you doing? Just building up to something that'll make you kick yourself all over the place, friend. You stop that. No, you're struggling, Igalescu. Monsieur Valentine is a very determined young man. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, here we are. Oh, well, those are... are, Well, I I mean... These are the phony diamonds I was carrying. 
The ones you just took off the table when you put the good ones back on it. Oh, no. No. The ones I stole from Mr. Tour with his complete cooperation. You are lying. Oh, but he is not. He is telling nothing but the truth. After all, since you had the real Romany diamonds all the time, we had to get them back somehow. And, Buster, you obliged us. Sort of cheating cheaters. Thanks a lot. Oh, you... You're not going to get away with it. This is not the end. You're so right, Rollo. I owe you something for all the cute tricks you tried to teach that Fez boy in the cabbie. And here it is. Oh, splendid. Magnifique. And now I have something else I must attend to. In Paris, that guy LeBlanc is too darn good looking. And maybe Paris in the spring is not overrated. Check these advantages of buying with a Chevron National Credit Card. For tax and budget purposes, your receipt is an accurate, permanent record of your gas, oil, and other purchases, and it's not necessary to carry cash. A Chevron National Credit Card is honored in the West by standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations, and by leading oil companies elsewhere in the United States and Canada. You'll enjoy new ease and convenience with a Chevron National Credit Card, your key to finer products and better service, at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. You know, darling, it's all true, all the things they say about Paris. Uh, I never saw you quite as radiant as you are now, Angel. There's love in the air. You can actually feel it. Your eyes are shining, ma blonde American. And I can thank Monsieur Leblanc for it. He's simply marvelous. Oh, he, he is. He knows so much about love and marriage and all the wonderful things it can mean. Oh, we had so many talks together. You, uh, you did? He's so young. But do you know that he's been married for over ten years? Oh, you don't say. He has six children and there's another one on the way. He says children make any marriage happy. Well, what do you know? He wants me to write to him and tell him just how the two of us are coming along. He says he can give me all sorts of good advice. Good, good. Let's call him. Why, darling. Yeah. Ask him if there's a good French restaurant in town. Tonight's transcribed adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It was written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Kenneth Webb. Robert Boone was heard as LeBlanc, Byron Kane as Tour, Larry Dobkin as Iglescu, and Benny Rubin is the cabbie. The music was composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Last year, more men than women died of cancer. There is no one, man or woman, young or old, who can be sure he won't develop this terrible disease. It strikes one in five of us. Strike back at it. Join the cancer crusade of the American Cancer Society. Give generously. Mail your contribution today to Cancer, Care of Postmaster. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.